Hey friends, I just released my new book, The Movie of Me to the Movie of We. You can get both of my books using the links below. Having people in power in, in the different parts of this world that is such a very troubled place yeah. right now. Yeah. Having these people who absolutely have no connectivity to anything beyond their me, their ego, their, you know, attachment to power and money or whatever it may be. Uh, that is, a, you know, and so people are reacting off of that. Look at our, the schism in this country now, of the polarity of the left and the right. And now the left is splitting, is yeah. doing another schism because of what's going on in the world. Yeah. And uh, so this is a, a, a pretty, uh, a little bit nervy reflection related to the epoch that we happen to be in. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it sort of, it, it got embodied, you know, I, I, this is something Carl Jung talks about how you, the shadow of society mm -hmm. gets yeah, reflected exactly. out into the world. And so it's like the pandemic was a projection of just what you're talking about, because what was one of the main rules during the pandemic? Social distancing. You know what stay I mean? away like, from stay everybody. Stay away from, from each Christ other. Christ. Separate. You're gonna separate. die. <laughs> so it was like this thing that was already mm. happening anyway, because of computers, because of the uh, lack of uh, you don't need to go out to date anymore. You can do it on your phone. You, you could find someone on your phone theoretically. It was like all of that division appeared in this disease that encouraged more of that division stay at home stay separated and so yeah i think it's a you could sort of you don't just have to go from the inside out in this jungian way you could theoretically go from the outside in look at what's happening in the world and then you'll know what's happening inside of everybody which yeah. is yeah, in, exactly. in this case, which is really scary yeah. really, really scary a lot of confusion a lot of a lot of um uh division or sort of taking sides yeah right and wrong my side is completely right your side is completely wrong like yeah. all so that means that inside people must feel divided in the same way i think and i think yeah, that absolutely so what is that yeah. feeling of why do people feel divided inside what is this sort of, I don't know, schisming or fragmentation happening inside of people. What are they feeling separated the from? The biggest thing is not feeling like they are part of a group of some sort or right. a mission or a purpose. They feel like they've been left behind. So, so that creates anxiety wow. and fear. And anxiety yeah. and fear is what promotes this feeling I have got to defend myself and therefore I have to create an other. Right. That, you know, that's, uh, by the way, you spoke to it in the, in the, I keep mentioning the book. Right? We did it. We, we, we made an audio book together. You guys that, that we've been working on for five years now or something like that for something a long like time. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's Which, a, it's a, it's like a. I guess you could say it's sort of like a lo very long podcast, but it's much more yeah, organized. Right. Well, it comes from different just just hanging out and recording. It comes from podcasts. It comes from all sorts of different areas. You know, the when you say five years on this book, by the way, it goes through all these different time periods different things were happening i mean the most pronounced wow, one of cool. course we said one day okay we're in the pandemic we better talk <laughs> about it we're gonna put yeah. this book. so the great i love this piece that's you know i think we're, we we put it out as a little sample of the book on social and it's you talking about how in the pandemic in italy the singer came out and he's entertain he or she is entertaining the people and yeah it's a wonderful experience and but operatic and it's just like yeah. so much passion oh wait in new york and somebody you mean, in the, you yeah, mean new york yeah, and then what do they do they took it and tell us about the new york thing <laughs> yeah tell that story well i think maybe you guys have seen this but yeah I, someone was trying to help in New York and in their yeah. mind trying to help was I think in the morning going out on their balcony and doing some kind of opera 
And yeah, like they did it for a little bit before just out of the uh, some window. Someone's like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. It was, <laughs> it was so absolutely hilarious. And yeah. but because, you know, I think, it, by the way, this book, this audio book, this is just a, we just decided to record this conversation we've been having maybe since we met, which is this exploration of the, of identity and you and me and the, the potential to not be so mired up in like selfishness, not like, you know, selfishness in the sense of like you, you eat the last piece of pie but selfishness, like what did you do? It was called self-cherishing, you know, where you be you're, you become your singular fixation in the world. Um, but yeah, that a lot of what's really sad is like because people do have this sense inside of them that there's this potential for connection via some form of service or openness. They then try to make that connection, but by glorifying themselves as they make the connection. You know what I mean? So that's what produces that right. cloying uh, version of it where even though the person appears to be doing something in service of others, it just reeks of narcissism and then makes people feel even more separated from them, thus doing maybe more harm. Maybe it would have been better for them to not do anything at all. <laughs> just sit home. Yeah. And feel separate. Yeah. No, but the, but the reality is, of course, listen, there was an impulse to do this, you and I. Uh, I'm, I say it in the book at some point. I was just sick of the constant self-referential uh, uh, behavior and the constant uh, just absolutely feeling all of these different emotions because I see the motivation. I mean, I've been, so I've been doing a lot of work for many years, right, at my age. And I, mindfulness is a great thing. Yeah. It really allows you to, to, to take a look at yourself. And when you see the, the selfishness and the, the, self, the grasping, basically, go on, go on, go on, then you start to think, okay, what, what do I do? Because I'm just so unhappy yeah. in this kind of a situation. I want to do something to save myself and in the saving of myself. And that just means be more equanimous, being more content, yeah. happy on a day-to-day -day basis, not feeling so absolutely self, you know, motivated by manipulative kind of behavior. And so it's like, okay, what can I do? In our case, we went, well, let's talk about it. Yeah. You know, maybe it'll help somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it'll help us. Because I think one of the problems is that at first, it, you know, and I think, I don't know about you, but I can speak as like a professional selfish person. Like I am so good at being selfish and in like the beginning of it, you don't even realize you're being selfish. You think it's just completely normal to spend every day trying to gratify your senses or trying to achieve something just for you or trying to get to the next level just for you. This is what we've been taught. It feels normal. And you don't realize that the happiness, the, you, the thing you think you're feeling, it's not even happiness. It's, it's more of like a kind of obsessive scratching at an itch or something. And it's not working anymore. And the highs you get from the success are not, they don't, hit quite as hard and but you keep going and going and going for it trying to refine the way you pleasure yourself or gratify your senses and at some point i think you get to where you were what you were mentioning there where you just realize yeah. like why don't i just like i might as well have like a 160 pound baby that i'm taking care of because that's what it's like giving the baby booze giving the baby ketamine <laughs> getting the baby blowjobs <laughs> You know what I mean? Like all the things you're doing are exhausting and you realize that 
you, you've become a slave to yourself, which is a very strange yep. feeling. And that yep. is supporting a that claustrophobic yep. feeling. 